Hey everybody, if you haven't been following the channel, um, so we have bought a shed and we're doing a house or shed to house conversion. And um, it's been in the summer, I got an overpowered air conditioner unit, which is really nice. Unless it's like, you know, around like one to four o'clock where the sun is just beating right down on the roof. And then it just gets hot and the, the air conditioner just just runs and runs and runs and tries to keep up. It's only comfortable right in front of it. So what I'm trying to do is insulate the roof of the shed. And I want to do it in a way that I'm not going to get mold. And I'm just not finding a whole bunch on how to do this on on the web or, or YouTube. And I'm pretty good about finding stuff. So I'm going to take you through the processes that I'm doing to insulate our roof. So our roof is a metal roof, but it has the uh, the, chi the chipboard underneath it to, to separate it. And it has, the, these are supposed to be there to keep bugs out, but they, they came out during chipping. I'm gonna have to fix that or something. But here's the metal roof, here's the chipboard, and, uh, and then there's just two by four rafters here. So the first step that I took was to get kills and paint everything because kills is a mold retardant paint it's probably going to be a little extra work to do but i hope that it pays off in the long run just because i'm not totally sure what i'm doing so we have some reflectix that we had bought and with some pink panther batting insulation with backing on it so i'm going to install this stuff so the reflectix documentation says that you should uh Put it, staple it to these beams and leave a, a quarter inch gap here. That's just because we're up in the northern northern part of uh, the states, I guess, in climate zone anyway. But that's what I'm going to do. And uh, hopefully between this and the kills anti-mold stuff that I put up there, we won't have any mold problems. All right, was just super happy with the way that this one turned out. I got a little bit of spacing on there, but some of these ones down here wasn't was really that great. But I got this styrofoam out of the bookshelf thing that we just put together. I'm gonna run it down there. And that should give it enough space to breathe like it should. But I just broke it. That was smart. I think this might have been a good idea in principle, but it don't seem like it's working too well. I broke it again. <laughs> I got most of the Thermex or whatever the heck that crap is called up. All right, day two of putting up insulation. I got two more panels to do on this side, and uh, and then I'll actually start the batting. I only have batting for enough enough for. It'll be this whole side except for that one on the very end. So uh, Angie said she's going to go get some more. I don't know if that'll be today or not. We'll see. I was talking yesterday or about how I don't have a good gap on there. And it was like kind of hard to figure out how to do this. This is the first one I did. This is the second. I got a little bit more of a gap. But I'm just not happy with how it turned out. I was talking on the other ones how I was putting styrofoam up on the nails and like even I'm stapling some on underneath to keep the gap there um, and then I also tried to 
actually go back afterwards and insert some uh, up top and that would that, that styrofoam was just too thin and when I tried to push it in there it was breaking and stuff so I found some thicker stuff and I think this will really work I'm going to go back down here on the on those first ones that I did down low because I, I, I fixed the ones up top but uh, and go put these thicker ones in there for the gap another thing I did on the first ones was that I just ran it all the way down to the wall and um, I don't really want to do that I want I want it to be kind of up a little bit and have the gap in there so air can flow up through if there's any spaces in here and just get the good airflow circulation up in there so hopefully prevent mold another thing i did at the very beginning is i was putting tape up everywhere as you can see to stop the to fill the gaps but I was reading that it's not really necessary. I think it's overkill. And the tape that I got here sucks. It's pretty cheap. It don't stick with the crap. Okay. So that's my blade. Never had that happen before. Find the razor blade. That's a really fun game. I'd never like to play again pain <laughs> yeah that definitely helped so I got a big piece down here and it's, it's definitely helped but there's it's still it's still like a dead space right here so another little idea you cut a hole in here I'm putting in a piece of insulation up in here. Foam. Star foam. Filling it up. Right. Now, I think I got plenty of space there. Now, while the other tape that I was complaining about, this, it's called Tape Plus. Well, this stuff does suck. We did actually buy some of the good kind. This is. This is the actual, actual Reflectix brand, and it actually seems to stick pretty good. So I'm gonna cover my hole up with this stuff, and that's what it's for. It's not supposed to, it's not designed to hold it or, or, or make it airtight where the staples are. It's just designed to like patch pieces together and stuff. And I almost forgot, if you're getting anything out of this video, hit the thumbs up button, I'd appreciate it. As you can tell here, there is a, you know, an inch to quarter inch gap here that allows the air to flow up through here. And I also added the styrofoam here to help as, as a, help as a spacer so that we're not touching all the way down. So I did not cover the screen here. There's, there's a gap in between the two, but with the batting insulation, I am going to go all the way over and across as a single piece i'm not going to put a piece there or, or i'm not going to skip this piece here so i thought that it, that will possibly help the airflow you know, do like a circle around up to the top and down to the bottom where maybe the insulation isn't touching the reflectix like uh, super hard but eh, i'm no expert all right i was cleaning this up to move some of this these little computer towers over from here because I'm tired of moving around. But I found these. I've been looking for them for like three weeks. Maybe a whole month. I don't know. I'm tired of wearing these ragged ones. Come here. Angela actually just bought me a brand new pair of these flip flops because the ones I'm wearing are trash. But these can be in they can be in side ones and the ones I got on. Oh wow. Oh, they feel, they feel good and clean. These can be my shower shoes and the outside shoes, as you can see. They're, they're, they've seen better days. It feels good to walk around on something that isn't infused with dirt. Yeah. It's amazing how something so simple can just lift your day.
One thing I have noticed that this reflected stuff, Ori is helping to some extent. Um, I don't know if the sun is just beating down on the roof right now because it's only it's it's like it's like around a little bit before noon. Um, but like after it's been cooking in the in the sun for a little bit, you can just sit and feel just the heat just radiating radiating off of it because I didn't, hadn't done this one yet yesterday. I was, I was sitting there and it's like, it's like man, it's just cooking my face. And I would come over here to this one that I've already done, and uh, it, it was a definite difference where it just didn't feel like the sun was just like radiating my face through the wood. So it is helping. It's hot up here, my son. So the package says to fluff it. I guess you just do this. excited about finding those flip-flops but it just wasn't meant to be I just broke them taking a shower <laughs> so they're coming to get our RV tomorrow supposedly um, We'll see if that happens but this is insulated and i mean the sun isn't beating down on us now but it does feel i'm not i'm not just like dripping sweat like it was earlier so i think it might work i use some scraps right there from the two leftovers to to fill in this fill in this uh this this member right here is actually a little bit smaller than the other ones these are these are 16 on center so the the, the 15 inch uh, batting uh, worked just fine, but this one's like I think like 14 so I had to kind of stuff it in there as you can see I actually uh, Put the Staples there because it just it didn't really want to fit good So I put the staples on that side on there even though it's probably well, yeah Yeah it's the only place to put it. Well, over there I had enough room to put it on the on the inside of the of the stud But I think it looks all right probably going to release this video out of order just so I can get some comments on the did I do it right because um, <laughs> I'm pretty paranoid about like getting mold up in here <laughs> I don't want that so if uh, if you have any pointers on how to do it um, put them down in the comments because I appreciate the, the help I, I don't want mold I do not want mold I do not want mold I do not want mold so with that said I'll be holding off a little bit on the rest of the of the roof just to see if there's any other uh, pointers that I get. But until next time, say a prayer for our family. We'll be saying a prayer for yours. God bless. I need you to move. Thank you.